Recently, a friend of ours gifted us this gem of a book called Enjoy Your Alligator. And it just goes to show that since 1973, when this came out, alligators were kept more commonly than you would think as pets. And the information in here is hilariously inaccurate, which just tells us how far we've come when it comes to caring for reptiles. First off, not keeping alligators as pets. But we're going to read through this book today to share with you how funny and inaccurate it is and who better to read it through with us than our alligator Rex. Now, unlike what this book will say during our story time today, Alligators do not make good pets. This one is a prime example of what happens when you improperly take care of an alligator. This is Rex, she is our American alligator. No, we never wanted an alligator, but someone we knew kept her, or brought her up from the Everglades in the 80s and kept her in a four foot wooden box for 27 years. When he asked if we wanted to adopt her from him, we were like, well, we don't want an alligator, but yes, we will take her because we wanted her out of that situation. So now she lives in our renovated guest bedroom. So sorry, in-laws, can't stay at our house. We've got an alligator in there. He works really well. For anyway, now, anyways. For now, yeah, it works well for now. But because of her past being kept in a small box, she is stunted permanently. She's only about four and a half feet long at now 32 years old, where she should be around eight to nine feet long, honestly. She also has a deformed snout here because as she was growing up living in that little box her snout would hit the sides of that box and because of that plus a nutritional deficiency since she wasn't fed what she should have been fed and how often she should have been her bones became weak and her snout curved upwards in a condition or from a condition called rubber jaw that's why her snout looks a little bit odd it kind of looks like a duck and her teeth also used to curve out sideways and they were almost clear and that's a condition called glassy teeth that we also had to deal with when we first adopted her along with some mouth rot so she had all sorts of issues she has since healed up from most of that although she is permanently stunted now and she's got too big eyes yeah that's right and she also has really big eyes for the size of her body her her she's eyes, funny looking. She's a little bit disproportionate, but she's kind of cute at the same time. So it works for us to have her, but it's really sad how and why she looks like this. So we're always advocates of not getting a pet alligator. They just don't make good pets. So do yourself a favor, don't get an alligator, but we're still gonna have fun with story time with Rex because this book is great. So let's get to this book. You know it's gonna be a good book when it starts with your baby alligator should look strange. What kind of a pet could such a creature make? If nothing else, a strange and curious one. But truth to tell, the alligator is good natured and easily cared for. With modern aquarium tanks, lights, and filters, he can be housed comfortably and at little cost. Who knew alligators were cheap to keep? Sweet, we can just go get a tank and throw it in there. Nice, it's just a little tank. Great, you won't cost anything. No, filter, a glass tank. Oh, it gets. Go? Just wait, it gets better. After the introduction, this book covers some natural history of alligators, which actually isn't inaccurate, it's actually uh, real information, but it gets good when it talks about how to care for a pet alligator. So that's what we're gonna jump to here. First, housing your alligator. He will not need a lot of exercise. He will be quite comfortable in a terrarium like those used for newts or snakes. In fact, any large glass container will do. Great. So what's large? 40 gallon? 50 gallon? A bowl? A bowl? I don't know. Oh, get this. It comes with a picture. Look at this. This is captioned, Here two baby caimans enjoy their new home. Look how happy they are. They have their couple inches of water in their vast space in their terrarium. Isn't that great? Nice. And there's two of them in there. Yeah. The next picture here says, Don't just drop your pet. Place him gently in the water. Well, at least they're not telling you to drop them. Yeah, I mean, that's something. That's something. <laughs> to heat the tank, place a jar of water in one corner tall enough to submerge the heater above the level of the thermostat. How? Could that work? So basically what they're doing is they're setting a jar of water with a heater in it and then the water in the jar is getting hot, which is slowly radiating the heat into the water with the cans. So it could work? It could as long as you only have like a gallon of water like they show. Oh my gosh, yeah, that's true. So for it's, a couple inches of water. And only if you needed to get a couple of degrees. Yeah, that too. 
This is my favorite picture in this book. It's captioned, it's easy to arrange an alligator home. Place about three quarters of an inch of gravel on the bottom and a rock island in one corner. Pour tepid water gently to the level of the rock. A hand held below breaks the force of the water, which makes sense. But look at this picture. She looks so happy, setting up her little alligator home. Oh, such a, that's too small for even baby alligators. I know, I know, but look at her hairdo. Oh, yes. That's pretty stylish. That screams the 80s. Yeah, 70s. 70s, 80s. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, it's not colorful enough for the 80s. That's true. So, going into cleaning and uh, more of the housing with alligators, your alligator is naturally a very clean animal. Ah. Ha! Rex, did you hear that? You're supposed to be clean. You don't know how to alligator. You're messy. Yeah. A small charcoal filter will make your cleaning chores negligible. Oh, so with a filter, you don't even have to clean them. I can beg to differ that. <laughs> when Rex poops, she thinks it's paint, I think. She smears it everywhere, and it's gross. Remember that he will eat only in the water. <laughs> he may seize his food on land, but he will slide it into the water to swallow it. Rex, again, I don't think you know how to alligator properly. You never eat in the water unless it's fish. Uh-uh. We fed her on the land. We only feed her on land. Cave. Rex, cave. Good girl. Your baby alligator may have to be taught to eat. They are known to eat, this is babies, they are known to eat bugs, spiders, fish, and small animals. It would not be surprising if your new alligator refuses food for a week or so while he's getting used to his new home. That makes sense. That's okay. A lot of reptiles do need to adjust. I suppose I can agree with that. Spiders? Yeah, spiders, I guess. If they're if it's in Florida, maybe big spiders, I mean, yeah. small alligators. But really, like, why would you get spiders for your alligator to eat? <laughs> I guess it's a good way to get vengeance on spiders. Yeah, really. <laughs> this, this is good though. It talks about if they don't want to eat for too long. Okay, uh -oh. ready? Try using tweezers to rub the food against the side of your pet's mouth. You may have to force feed him the first few times, actually putting the food into his mouth. And then it shows this picture of a guy force feeding a baby alligator with the caption of, when hand feeding a baby alligator, use a rubber tipped pencil as a pusher. So it's telling you to just literally shove and push food down their throat. With an er with a pencil, with, with an eraser that could possibly fall off. Yeah, like That's no good. training by a professional or anything. Just read this book, just do it. Just pop their mouth open with yeah. the side of each finger and force it pencil, down their throat. Push it in, easy. <laughs> and then they'll just start eating on their own. Rex doesn't seem amused by this book. Yeah. We don't have to force feed you. You eat everything. Next it talks about handling your pet. Did you know you could hypnotize baby alligators at your home? Next picture is of an alligator being hypnotized. Like that's something you do every day with your baby alligator. Yeah. This one says, alligators can be hypnotized quite easily. Hold him on his back and stroke his stomach lightly. They're telling people to do this with pet alligators that they had in the 70s. Should we try to hypnotize you, Rex? Yeah, that'd be, that'd be suicide. I mean, I know that does work. You can, are you gonna do that with Rex? Nope. Immobility is generally brought about in an animal that is under heavily stressful conditions. Oh. Don't try this at home. But this book says you should try yeah. it. It's easy to hypnotize your pet alligator. Just grab it and flip it over and yeah. rub its belly. Yeah, easy. Oh, Rex did not like that yeah. idea. No, we're not going to hypnotize fan. you. It's okay. We're not going to hypnotize you. No, it's fine. I promise. In captivity, alligators usually become very lazy and tame. I have seen very lazy and tame alligators in captivity, but... That doesn't happen all the time. It takes a lot of work to calm down an alligator. Even Rex, we had to let her kind of calm down a little bit before we started filming because she has so much energy. She's not quite lazy and tame, like the book says. On the bottom of the terrarium, spread a layer of sand or gravel, then of course several inches of tepid water because the alligator will spend much of his time there. That's true, alligators, or Rex does like her water. He will also need a dry land area where he can pull himself out entirely out of the water, sorry, and lie there to sun himself. How is that picture they showed of setting up the alligator enclosure able for them to stretch out and get out completely out of the water? And they don't recommend any light. And sun, exactly. It says to keep him at room temperature, just in a tank with water. And a heater in a jar. That's true, and a heater. Maybe that takes the place of a basking lamp. Yeah. And, or a UVB, and you UVB know. And yeah, they sun. don't need that. They don't no. need UVB. This is what happens when they don't yeah. have UVB. Rex didn't have UVB. Mm -mm. And yeah, all in all, that is what your terrarium should look like. Perfect. For two baby canines. For two. Not just one, but two. Oh, look! 
You can house them with turtles. Oh, great. It actually says alligators and turtles do well together, but only when they are of proportionate sizes. Large alligators will eat small turtles and vice versa. So, I mean, in, at least they warn you about that. I guess if they're the same size, they could be kept together. But I've they heard of that quite a bit. Actually. Yeah, and I've seen it before, but it doesn't last long because no. they don't grow at the same rate. Well, One full gets size, much bigger yeah. than the other. <laughs> An American alligator takes full-size painted turtles all the time for tasty snacks. They do. So I don't think that would be a good permanent uh, solution to cohabbing. The alligator is a noisy creature, by far the noisiest of the reptiles. Middle-aged alligators moo the same sort of sound that cows do. I don't know if I've ever heard an alligator moo before. You don't usually go to kids and say, what sound does the alligator make? And hear moo in response. <laughs> they also hiss a warning when annoyed. In fact, even before they're hatched, the babies begin grunting and bellowing, gaining in volume the older they get. That's the end of the book. That's where it ends. There's, there's no conclusion. Oh, what the? Right. Well, and that's that. That's the book. And now I know how to take care of an alligator. Thank you, Enjoy Your Alligator. What a wonderful book. I guess I've been doing it all wrong. Yeah, we need to get Rex in a much smaller enclosure. Yeah, smaller enclosure, that much water, yeah. one rock in the corner. And she can barely get out of the water. Right? Yeah, no oh, light. We have to feed her in the water. Oh, that's right, we can only feed her in the water. What terrible advice. But this was the advice everyone went with back in the 70s and 80s. I mean, her old owner went by some of this advice, I'm sure. I mean, that's it was common knowledge back then. That's how you take care of an alligator. And now look at the result. Now we have a permanently stunted alligator with rubber jaw, old glassy teeth. Well, like I said earlier, this just goes to show how far we've come in the reptile hobby and how to properly take care of reptiles. And I think the general consensus is that alligators just don't make good pets. I don't think you could find any new publications of how to enjoy a pet alligator, or how to take care of an alligator, because people just know not to take care of them, which is good. Leave them in the wild. Leave them in the wild. Or become a very big professional who can actually build and take care of them yes. properly. Yes, exactly. In the normal household, is not going to be a good environment full of, for a full-grown alligator. Now, if you guys want to buy this pamphlet, it's we didn't read everything in it. We just pointed out the best parts, in our opinion, but there's still some good information. Good information. Funny. In funny, here. Information. funny information. Don't take it seriously. You can still find this on Amazon, believe it or not. It was a friend of ours who found it in his basement from storage long, long ago, and he immediately thought of us and gave it to us. But you can still buy these on Amazon. But thank you everybody for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed us while we had our first story time with Rex, and we uh, humorously picked on this amazing but not amazing book about alligator care. As always, thank you to all of our Patreon supporters for backing this channel. We love all of you guys. I hope you enjoyed the sneak peek that you got to today's video. I'm sure it confused you all why there was an alligator crawling up our steps. But yeah, thank you to everybody who's just following our channel. And we'll, we'll see you next time. What do you think, Rex? You ready to go back in your room? Oh, well, I'm sure she is. <laughs>